Hello and good evening to everyone. I'm just doing a quick update on a recent presentation that I was doing with regards to autopsy analysis of all vaccinated deaths with COVID-19. And I'm going to be doing a more detailed analysis on my Substack. That's where I'll go through a bit more of my thoughts um, as to exactly what I think could be happening. And it's a theoretical exercise because this is our very first autopsy th series peer reviewed uh, that we have on vaccinated deaths. Now, as I said previously, it was 18 months down the line. I would have thought this would have been more of a priority that we're seeing what's happening. But anyway, we are thankful that we have got the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can take a look at some of the information that I'll be discussing on my Substack. And just to remind you with regards to my Substack, uh, this is uh, here, everything COVID-19. This is where I'll be able to talk a little bit more openly about some of my uh, concerns, if any, from the details with the autopsies. And I'll share with you the ideas and the link is down below. Please join me and subscribe. So I look forward to having you. So let's get straight into the principle. So here is what you would do. The link for this um, paper is right in the, in the description below. And what you have here is modern pathology high viral loads, what drives fatal cases of COVID-19 in vaccinees. This is the autopsy study. And so you, you have an abstract here which gives information about what's happening in terms of the overall paper. It's kind of like a summary of it. But the bit that I want you to focus on, if you want to work with me on it, is to jump all the way down to the bottom. So if we go down to author affiliations, this is again from Germany. But what we're after is the supplementary information and in the supplementary information you would click on this link so once you found the paper from the link below you would click on this link and then this would download a word document and this downloaded word document would then show you what it is that we're going to look at and so that's the the essence of what we'll be doing um with regards to um, on the substack so that you have an idea of the focus. So what I want to do with you today is to give you a quick idea as to what the details are that we would need to see from that supplementary information. And so again, um, I will take you back to, this is the supplementary uh, document, high viral loads, uh, autopsy study, it shows the, um, the the, the information about the authors. And then if you roll down, you have supplementary table one. So essentially, these are the case numbers. So each case is C123 all the way up to 29, shows their age here in decades. So the sixth decade, uh, eighth decade, the 10th decade, that's coming up to 100 years old, their gender, whether male or female, and whether or not this was a complete autopsy or a partial autopsy or legal medicine. I'm not quite sure what they mean with that, but um, it's something that I'll look into a little bit more. Uh, cause of death, according to the WHO. Interestingly, when I clicked on the link in the supplementary document, that page no longer exists. And so it probably is a reflection that uh, some of the thinking could have changed in regards to that. But that's that's a different story. So I'll take you back to the, the things we'll be looking at when I'm talking about it on my Substack. So as we continue down, we have the vaccination status. Uh, now the first groups were all partial vaccinations. Um, and this person was still considered partial, partially vaccinated, even though they had two um, injections. And this would have probably meant they were not 14 days after the second uh, injection. And this is why they're still considered partial um, vaccination. This is the vaccine that was used. So this would be Pfizer, uh, BNT, and this would be AstraZeneca. Uh, it doesn't seem as though they had any Moderna here because this was Germany. And um, nasopharyngeal um, uh, swab at diagnosis CT um, value. And the CT value is talking about cycle threshold. The, the basic way of thinking of it is just 
the lower the number is, the earlier the cycle threshold would have detected viral RNA. And so therefore that means that there is suggestive that there is high number of virus, high amounts of virus in the picture. And nasopharyngeal swab at autopsy, again, the cycle threshold here, you can see uh, is relatively low. PCR tissue, lowest CT value, again, it's relatively low and primarily in the lungs. And this is for the partially vaccinated. Viral dissemination, that means if they were finding virus in multiple tissues, this is important. There seems to be a lot of dissemination, which we will also be going into when I'm discussing the, um, the paper in a little bit more detail as to why I think that mechanism could possibly occur. Continuing on, time from last vaccination to the positive SARS-CoV-2 test. In this person, it was one day. In this person, it was 13 days. This was 180 days in this person. So that just gives us a time frame for when they started the symptoms. And the time from first symptom to death, this is important because it gives us an idea as to how quickly the patient deteriorated. And again, this is close, for first positive PCR to death. Continuing down, you have the SARS-CoV-2 serology, and this is showing you the amount of uh, um, spike in the bloodstream and whether or not it was high amounts. Less than 0.8 is what would be considered normal and say this person had over 2,500. Some of the patients, not all of the patients had um, this done. And so this is relevant in terms of um, trying to understand the picture. Um, continuing along, uh, we have the nuclear capsid serology here. And nuclear capsid is just about the viral um, protein. And it's one of the proteins um, in the virus. And it usually indicates whether or not there has been natural infection as opposed to vaccine induced um, antibodies here. So in some patients, it was positive here. And so it suggests that these patients um, were early in the cycle, they got infected. And so they produced um, a, a response to the nuclear capsid. Variant of concern, alpha delta. So this was early last year. So this autopsy series was done over a period of time and it does take time to do them. So that's one of the reasons why it could have taken some time. However, this kind of information should really have been expedited and it certainly was important for it to be done. Um, SARS-CoV-2 lineage here, and they're talking about which, uh, which virus or variant it is, and IgA levels. Um, I'll look into what the relevance of this is. I'm not sure exactly what I would consider this to be. And then the IgG levels and the highest CRP. And CRP is C-reactive protein. And uh, this is a, a response that you get to any infection where the infection markers will go relatively high and, um, and we see it in most infections, chest infections, urine infections, and it's just an, an indicator of inflammation. It can also happen outside of infection in just inflammation. So even things like gout can cause very high levels of a CRP. Um, highest procalcitonin, this is a little bit more specific to bacterial infection. And so the number here is less than 0.5. You can see one person had very high levels here greater than 100, but most of the other ones were low or close to low. Interleukin-6 is a measure primarily of macrophage function or macrophage activation. And you can see in this patient here, it was ex exceptionally high values. Um, and that's something we would look into in a little bit more detail. Whether or not there is associated malignancy and which malignancy was involved, and this gives you a picture of the comorbidities. These are all the other things that were wrong with the patient that would have been a contributing factor to death. BMI, uh, this is talking about the weight of the patient. Normal is 18.5 to 25. So up to here, 25 to 30 is overweight and over 30 is, um, is, is obese. So this is 50 is quite high. Invasive ventilation, whether or not somebody was on intensive care or just had oxygen, whether or not they were given steroids is here, and changes to lung, um, lung parenchyma or what happened histologically 
in the lungs associated uh, with the death. So these are all the points that I'll be looking at, and I'll be trying to explain why I think this is relevant and trying to extrapolate some understanding from it. Because one of the big questions has always been, has the death in the vaccinated been the same as what happens in the unvaccinated? And this is a really important thing for us to know going forward because we're still having large cohorts or significant numbers of people who are vaccinated who are dying. And this may help us to understand what, if anything, can be done. So uh, again, I thank you very much for joining me. And that's just the overview and the details we'll go into if you join me on Substack. Um, I'd like to encourage you to do that. And uh, yes, please, I hope that you found this insightful and look out for some more information that I'll share in the next few days and weeks. But certainly, if you want to hear me do an analysis of that information, you need to join me um, on Substack. So have a good evening and I look forward to speaking to you again.